to relay. Light your sister on fire. It's not a good idea. You shouldn't be doing these things. And the cops are going to get called. Oh, are we live? Yeah. Yeah, I'm um, sorry, man. Um, Listen. <laughs> so just ignore everything you just heard. <laughs> Listen. Yeah, normally, I'm the one that says crazy stuff at the beginning. Uh, Yeah. That does hello. happen. Hello, welcome to the show. Hello, hello, and welcome to the show. Um, I like that. Uh, David is uh, not here. He has been replaced by a large ship. With a railgun. With a railgun. It is the Idris M. Um, in David's place, I'm going to be the one drinking beer today. Uh, I am I am drinking uh, Shiner Bach uh, Prickly Pear. Prickly uh, pear, hey? Prick, prickly pear. Yeah, mm. it's very good. It's very, like, refreshing. It's, it's nice. Um, welcome to the show. Uh, there's a lot to talk about this week. <laughs> yeah, more than nothing, anyway. That's yeah. good. Yeah. <laughs> um, did you guys get to watch Star Citizen Live? I did not. Yeah. Um, so it's Todd there's Pappy. It's Todd Pappy for an hour, so there's a lot of information, uh-huh. a lot of data. <laughs> as it as it goes, um, usually. Yes. Um. But first, let's welcome our uh, legend, Fastcart. Yes, Fastcart the legend. Yeah. The the legendiest of legends in the Star Citizen community. <laughs> um, Hi, everyone. So, uh, before we do anything else, uh, we hear you have a new show. Yes. Yes, uh, we started last week, the first episode, called Soul Citizens. Uh, yeah, pun intended. Um, I'll put a link into... Um, Slap it. To, yeah, I'll, I'll put a link into Twitch chat real quick. We can find the narrative. And, you know, we're trying to do something different with a little, you know, with the usual Star Citizen podcast. We're not too different, but, you know, might might be more to some people's um, taste than, than others. Um, we're having a show tomorrow at um, 8 p.m. East, um, Eastern Time. That's 5 p.m. Pacific. And I don't know what time that is going to be on, um, on UTC. But, um, yeah, so tune in. We're talking about the address, which is, you know, relevant because we just had the, 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 the insight to our citizen about the address. So mm-hmm. it should be fun. Very nice. Oh, and yeah. also, I'm on I'm on Miss Hush's 80 show on the base radio. Awesome. On Tuesday. Definitely check that out. Miss Hurts is a good time. Um, so before we go any further, I got to give, uh, props to, uh, Darjanator for creating that, uh, image of the Idris. Um, it, uh, when it was released by CIG, it had a bunch of fighters in the picture and, uh, now it looks much more intimidating with just staring you down. Yeah. <laughs> um, all right. So let's, uh, move on to show and tell for it's like game. a lightning storm in space <laughs> <laughs> amazing reference yeah amazing reference oh wow all right so this was a community event where they got together yeah, to this show is off cool. like a bajillion ships really cool yeah, there's a lot of ships that is a lot of ships. So we got, what, uh, 890 Jump, a couple of 600 Eyes, uh, Carrick, um, a Reclaimer, some Constellations. Oh, man, there's so Both much stuff. Both Carricks. Yep. The only thing I have to say about the only thing I have to say about this is that ships happen. <laughs> yes. <laughs> many, many ships. A couple Starfarers. Wow, there's a lot going on there. That's yep. really cool. 
All right. So moving on to the CIG presented stuff. Why is my phone going off like crazy? Uh, anyway. There's a white caterpillar. I. You see that? There is apparently. Where's the white caterpillar? Uh oh. Now Jake. Jake Jake's got his white whale now. <laughs> I'm not even going to make a comment about that. Oh, I don't want a white caterpillar. <laughs> yeah, that's amazing. That sounds awesome. Whoa, that didn't work. Okay, fun. Why did that do that? Can Ooh. somebody tell me what the white caterpillar is? Oh, yeah. Yeah, it's the it's the skin from the from the thing. Okay. Okay, let's try that I... again. I Got it. I got it. There, it didn't break that time. Woo! So this is one of the new missions here. Oh yeah, this is this is really cool. I'm yeah. actually really excited for this. So this is the this is the um, the uh, attacking a tra pirate transport uh, uh, prisoner transport. Yeah. Gotcha. Oh no, this was the one before that. So this is the one where you have to cooperate and kill two targets um, cooperatively in like a two minute time yep. frame. That's really cool. The the prisoner busting out mission is so cool. There, here it is right here. It, it's going now. It requires a lot of coordination and you have to like look at manifests and stuff. Yeah, you know? it's really neat. You have to That's choose the, awesome. Have to let the right prisoners out. Yeah, I love the or, EVA gunfight. Let here. everybody out. I can imagine that there's gonna be like some kind of contest who can complete it the fastest, like between streamers and stuff. Oh yeah. I mean, it's not gonna be that hard considering the uh, FPS AI and the state that that is in currently. Right. It's amazing. What are you talking about? Well, We're probably straight out of 1990. <laughs> they probably have to have to redo it every every path or whatever whatever the AI change. Get the uh -huh. you know almost a leaderboard for it. So that was really cool. Do you want to watch that again, or is there anything else you guys have to say about the prisoner transport? It's it, this this is they're, they're, it's a video game. They're doing it. Yep. Um. This is gonna tie really awesomely into the um, into the the actual prison gameplay. Also, so imagine like one of those prisoners might be a player. That sounds mm. neat. Hmm. It's an interesting thought. Yeah. So, so you're not es escorting an NPC. You're escorting an actual player. Yeah. Oh right, That's great. Um, the I I like that the caterpillar is getting some love finally. Like people like the caterpillar, but it's not used a whole lot in in official things, I guess. Yeah, that's fair. Yeah. Um. I really like those uh, stasis tubes. They're pretty cool. Yes. Yes, they are indeed. All right, let's move on to our next video here. Also, again, as always, videos courtesy of Haramus. Thank you very much. Yep. Thank you. He had a lot of work to do this week. There's a lot yeah, more. I bet he did. I, I there think, was a I, lot I, of things. And then we have our dear friend up there, the Aegis Dynamics Frigate. Yeah. Um, um, this looks hard. Very, uh, <laughs> yes. Yeah, I, I like uh, the comments in the in the um in, in the inside thought citizen. They said they had um what ten retaliators or something like that, and it and it, and it was chaos, but it wasn't really making a dent into it. Yep. So that's gonna be a hard battle. Is it ten or eighteen? One or the other. But they had a lot of retaliators trying to pound into it, but it wasn't doing much. We now have some. I'm just getting the link here for the questions. 
We now have 2,838 questions that have been asked. That's a lot of questions. I mean, we've been doing this show. We've had that document since Relay started. So yep. that was 2016? Uh, that Earlier. was twenty. Uh, the end of 2016. Tw yeah. Yes. December. And let me guess. Let me guess. Three fifth of mine. Uh, yeah, as at least, always. At least three fifth. As always. Five out of seven. All right. So we have our questions link in there. Um, of course, the bot doesn't work because David's not here. We should probably resolve that at some point. Figure out if, yeah. I, if there's a way for me to run the bot as well. <laughs> Oh. Yeah, that'd be nice. Yeah. The, um, well, because well, Nightbot is is not a cloud service. It's a it's a local hosted thing. Yeah, but I could probably figure out how to run it on my own. Yeah. Anyway, um, anything uh, you want to point out about this uh, terrifying? Um, I'm, yeah, a I'm little not sad yes. that the interior is not a thing. It's not done, no. So, there's that. I'm looking uh, forward more to this than I am to the, the prison thing. Because this is more, more my style of gameplay. <laughs> getting blown up? <laughs> hmm? I said getting blown up? Well, not just getting blown up, but just, you know, I, 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 suck, at, I suck at FPS. I can't really do FPS oh, yeah. well. But, you know, flying a ship I can do. That's entirely fair. All right. Now we have this really cool tool that is definitely more of a dev thing than a gameplay thing. But, hey, man. Uh, so so my whole job is selling tools that make life easy, yeah. like software tools. So this was like, oh, I get it. <laughs> like I, un I understand your pain and suffering that you have to deal with. So basically the deal with this tool is that they were having difficulty be now that they have so many effects on planet side, they're having difficulty when something was screwing up, figuring out which one of the effects it was that was messed up. So now they've created this tool that can isolate each one of the effects and allow them to see it in real time. Um, and that uh, their makes their lives a lot easier. Yeah. Can you imagine that when players actually get hands on, on my tool, they'll have access to stuff like this too, and the stuff that we can, I mean, the community can that come up with? Awesome. Not, not me. I hope so. Not me, but the community. Nope. That's it, Fast Cart. We're relying on you to build an entirely new game. Uh. Music. <laughs> music. Be frogs, what, in, I'll, I'll, frogs I'll, in space. Tell you what. I'll write a script and someone else can do it. That, that's what, that's what <laughs> we're doing. Yeah. Fair enough. All right. Also, I know we say it every week, but damn, it's ever really good. Microtech is a beautiful planet. <laughs> I'm very happy with it. They've done extremely good things with it. I'm very, very happy. Next up, random cargo manifests. Something they're working on right now, so that not every cargo ship is carrying the same thing. <laughs> Yeah, that's nice. <laughs> yeah. Um, um, I don't care what Lando says. I want the God Pistol. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You uh, and you and eighty percent of other people, every everyone else. So yeah. yeah. <laughs> Lando, yeah, you don't that, get that this pistol. <laughs> I want the God Pistol. I mean, yeah, and you know when you said that, pe pe that make people want it even more. So if we hadn't said anything, pe a, a few people would ask, but not, not as many as, uh, as they are now because you do a testing to it. Yep. <laughs> of course. As always. All right. Next up, we have their in extreme difficulty deciding which color blue to use. Yeah. <laughs> For the I, like, I get that. I get it. You do? Yeah. Color's important. And, like, especially when they when they said, like, like hey, like, uh, especially with dynamic lighting, that blue can be, like, six different blues, depending on what location you're in. Yeah, I get that part. But, I, I, I think mean, they got... 
they got to make sure that you can still see it when it's dark. It's got to be a good blue. Yeah. I mean, I mean, they pick the color with the mobile glass, and sometimes on, on whatever, what looks, depending on the location you, you are in, you, you can't see what's on the mobile glass. Yeah, I'm like, I don't think that was something they're very proud of or hoping to repeat. <laughs> well, okay, okay, they're not, they don't want to repeat it, but I'm like, it's on, on certain planets you just can't help it. On yeah. certain locations you just yeah. can't help it. So I mean, you just like got to go with whatever is the least problem, problematic, and I guess having I get to having trouble. Finding, finding that um, denominator. So on that topic, uh, Todd Pappy on Star Citizen Live this week did actually mention that they're currently working very hard. One of his top priorities is to completely revamp the Moby Glass because they want to modularize it like they did the rest of the UI. Um, currently, and of course, of course, currently it's all running in Java, which they really don't want to be doing anymore. <laughs> or wait, is it Java yeah. or Flash? I can't remember. My brain just dropped that piece of information. I don't remember. Um, but anyway, it's not running the way they want it to at all. So they're uh, working to fix the mobile glass. And hopefully with that fix comes some better options or better handling for dynamic lighting conditions. Because, yeah, it can be almost impossible to see sometimes. All right. Now, any other thoughts about the Cutlass Blue? Do you like the red and blue and white lights all over it? It, it looks very police officerly like. Like yeah. I, 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 I'm gonna be worried when when I see behind behind it. It might it might be a view mirror. <laughs> yep. All right. Then we have cryopods. So these are some uh, designs for for the cryopods, and. Yeah. Them discussing how to make it Drake enough. Yeah. That's pretty I funny. mean, it looked plenty Drake, Drake to me, but I guess it's not Drake enough. <laughs> uh, how do you make more, more Drake? Drake? I don't know. By the way, I think this is an opportune time to bring this up since Jake didn't see uh, Star Citizen Live this week. Um, oh. Apparently, if you eat a granola bar in Star Citizen, your character will unwrap the granola bar first. I heard about then, that, yeah. <laughs> and apparently, Chris Roberts was very excited when he saw that. <laughs> the man likes his immersion. That's right. Drink. Uh, uh, well, no, you, but, um, you have a beer there. I, <laughs> <laughs> but uh, I'll be interested in, in seeing my character. Like, what, what, did, he, what did my character do, do with the rapper afterwards? Eat it. <laughs> edible wrapper. Hey, in 2950, you never know. All right, this is your seg segment, Jake. Go for it. Listen, <laughs> I couldn't be happier with this. Like, it's it, it's so nice. The cockpit alone is just the most beautiful thing I've ever seen. Um, like lots of red. Uh, I want my clones of Miles Eckhart, please. Can I just have? <laughs> I want Ted Miles Eckert as my NPC crew. Um, yeah, like, look at it. It's beautiful. The lighting is really good. Like, it looks nothing like any ship that's in the game right now, which is huge for me. That's perfect, Cam. Um, I like to keep the bird's nest feel in the back there. Yeah. 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 Look at the cockpit. It's beautiful. Ah. Oh. <laughs> I do like the I do like the the red and black theme that I, I wish I could I wish I could put that theme to to, to other ship that, that I own. It just looks but like I, I, for, for the power itself, but it's not a ship that I, I own or I intend to get. It just looks like you know you know those streamers who have like seventeen monitors. <laughs> yes, that's what it looks like. <laughs> oh man, RGB well, dude, up the wazoo. That's what they are is monitors. They're not. That's not glass. I'm talking about. I'm talking about right here, in the parlor. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Be up, up the wise you. Totally. Yeah, just just R, just wow. R for this one. Just R. You're right. You're right. Yeah. <laughs> All right. So, Prowler's coming along, coming out soon. Yep. And then oh, we 3. have. Oh, 3.9 is going to be 
god tier. Like I'm I'm very excited for 3.9. I'm gonna play a lot of Star Citizen. Yeah. So not good Jesus tier, God tier. That's a tier god of God Jesus, right? Okay. Yeah. Um. Oh, I broke this. Just a moment. Or no, I didn't. Never mind. That's right. It worked, it's um, working. So this is really cool. They're continuing to drive immersion on planets. Um. So they're uh, they're giving the uh, the lighting for um bases a uh a day night cycle yep so you can see an extremely accelerated view here of the rotation also how cool is it that we have rotating planets anyway yeah it's very uh, cool I, I would more impressed with that than the actual daylight cycle i mean the the lighting of the turning off and on but yeah the, the rotating planet and seeing the, the sky the sky bar in the background that that that, that pleased me more than the actual thing mm-hmm yeah, I know. I I'll, often a lot of times when I'm when I'm playing Star Citizen, I'll just sort of stand there on a planet and stare up up for a long long time. <laughs> like, oh wow, look at this. Um, yep. They're doing a good job. The planets are getting better so fast; it's just ridiculous. I don't have much else to say about this, but I mean, it, it, it's, a cool, it's, it's just a cool shot. So, Hermes has has uh, named this next clip, If you have a small penis and you need to look at your stock. Okay. This is the stock ticker on the pre people's shirts in Microtech. Ah. <laughs> I was not sure where you are going with that one. I do want the purple one that has just, like, ships and yes. stuff. Yes, yes. Yeah, I, that's yeah, the same, I want the same one. I would get that one, and, and, and I would get the stock one, but I would, more, I would wear the, um, the ship one more. Yep. Yep, it's very nice. Yeah, that one right there, the purple one. Oh, uh, CIG so stock up 4%. Yep. Did you see that? Yeah. Very nice. Well, this was a few days ago, so it's not accurate now. I love the uh, I love the like studded metal looking pants. Yeah, it's, like, it, it's, okay. it's it's edgy, <laughs> but also not edgy. Oh, I love it. Oh, this whole thing is gonna be so yeah, cool to cool to see in game. It's gonna be tough getting the, getting a fashion um straight and, and I mean there's in touch it. It's gonna be a lot to choose from. Reason. Yeah, that's yeah, that's what I was going for. There's so much to choose from, and like other games had to reverse problem with not much, not much diversity. They can only have too many like, ships, clothes, planet, <laughs> too many things. You notice how good that leather looks? And they had they should should that strip of black leather, man. Their materials are just on point. Yep. I remember. Yeah, right, yeah I'm definitely I'm I'm definitely going to get that ship one and try to hopefully I can put my own put my put another. Uh, all right and then we have wally's bar with steve steve exactly i like steve i like steve I, too i i feel like i feel like steve he he's a newer dj but he's starting to make a name for himself but he hasn't decided on what his stage name is so we're just gonna call him steve mm -hmm. i i hope his no, no, no. I hope his name is just Steve. All lowercase. Yeah, all lowercase. All lowercase. Oh, but it has to have the each of the E's is a is a three. Right? Yep. Oh yeah. <laughs> Perfect. Well, which, which which E is a three? Both of them are just like, one. Both of them. It's like both. it's like okay. Dead Mouse, but Steve. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. <laughs> I really, really love the look of this bar. This is a place I would like to hang out. Also, I do all just like Jared. I do enjoy the uh, weird foggy rock thing. Um, yeah, I'm not even sure what to make of that. He wasn't either. Um, <laughs> my my first thing I thought when I when I saw that was, oh no, CIG, you've screwed up because now you have to have that sculpture in real life at CitizenCon. <laughs> oh, <laughs> they all fabrication can do it. I'm sure they, they can. Yeah. The fog, the fog and wet part is probably the hard part, not the sculpture. Yeah, I gotta say, how much dry ice are you gonna need for that? <laughs> right, for like eight, eight hours. Oh, one of the yeah. things I really like about this is, and I hope they carry it through, but um, the lighting on this bar scene almost perfectly matches an old 
concept art of uh, one of the bosses, one of the bosses, one of the bars on Goss uh, 2, which is Cassell. Mm. <laughs> um, and, uh, like, it's just, I'm, I'm almost certain that they checked out that concept art when they were uh, designing this. It's called the Pulse Nightclub. No, that's not right. No. Uh, I forget. I, 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 and I just watched it like an hour ago. <laughs> um. Do 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 do. Hey, there it is. Found the. The Copacabana. <laughs> nice. Here, here's Can you the, imagine um, like? Can you imagine like a, uh, getting getting to a bar fight there and someone someone accidentally hit, hit, hitting the, hitting the stone pillar with a laser or something, <laughs> or a gun or something? Um, bum, bum, bum. So, uh, bum, bum, bum. there it is. Just gonna drop a link into the uh, Twitch chat here. There's a shot okay. of the concept art there of uh, the pulse bar in Cassell. Oh wow! Ah. You see what I mean? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. That. I that, mean the whole the whole lower part. Yeah. And I, the upper it's part very. Is, th this is very uh, the Omega nightclub from uh, Mass Effect Two. I'm not sure Can if you, you noticed, but the date that's on beside the signature there is 2013. Woo! For that piece of concept art, so they're like really carrying through their design, their uh, their like art aesthetic. Yeah, Can you show it on stream? Oh yeah, hard? totally, totally. Uh, okay, I'll do that yeah. right now. Yeah, I guess for our YouTube viewers. Hello, YouTube viewers. There are actually people oh, who yeah. watch us on YouTube. I'm always kind of amazed by that. Um... <laughs> they do. I know. Thank you very much. All right. Uh... Just a mo just give me a moment here. Um, yeah, but the whole lower part. Thankfully, the video that's I, running I in the background is pretty great. Um, okay. So this is the this is the Pulse nightclub here in Cassell, which is the second planet in the Goss system. And uh, yeah, and where where's the, where's the nightclub that they showed on t on Thursday? What planet is that on? Oh, uh, that's um, that's Microtech in Stanton. Microtech, okay. Um, and yeah, so that's... Uh, but what I think they're doing is I think that... Because remember they have those different uh, like archetypes for the... the um, archety Archetypes for the architecture in different planets. Um, yep. And I think that the whole high-tech vibe, they're like, well, we already have a good example of that, so we're going to use it here. Oh, I mean, we, not, just, uh, we do not uh, simul stream to YouTube, Bryce Serena. We only upload the recording. Yep. Yeah. Maybe someday. I was gonna say. I was gonna, I was gonna say it's not like they, they have to like do just one thing right here. They can use it on different places, different oh, yeah. variations in different places. Because you know they have architectures to you know work on different worlds. So. Definitely, and I, I just yeah, I I thought it was. It definitely popped out in my head right away. I'm like, as soon as I saw this bar, I'm like, I've seen, <laughs> I've seen concept of the, art of this type of idea. I mean, I've, I've seen so many concept of stuff and stuff, and like over the years, like it's it, it, it's going out out of my brain now. Cause like <laughs> I, I, I you know, like I can't I can't pick up on on, on nuanced stuff that I that I'm like, why does that look familiar? And I won't be able to place it. Yeah, like the uh, every, a few select people still remember the uh, Pegasus escort carrier that they haven't shown in about six oh, years. I do. <laughs> I remember. Um, I remember. But to the best of my knowledge, the last time that anybody asked them about it, they said they're still planning and making it. They just haven't done it yet. So hopefully they do. All right. So that is the end of uh, show and tell for today. Put the question back on the thing again. I I hope that there are lots of questions. Um, and, I would not come uh, on the show. Well, that's the end of the video part. We should probably go through. Was there a significant roadmap update? Uh, any, I haven't did had anyone a chance look? To look I didn't look at. I haven't had a chance to look. All right, I will look right now. Okay. Um. 
Doing it live. So, oh, right. He, uh, they talked about this before. Um, surrendering is now out of 3.9. No more surrendering. You can't surrender. Um, other than that. Never give up. <laughs> apparently. <Never surrender. laughs> yeah, so one of the options is going to be surrendering to the, uh, the law. Um, but that uh, is not going to be an option I in three point nine. I am the law. Oh, that's good. Dick, that's, Dick I, the law. I don't even have a Those comment for that. Um, <laughs> so some good news here: weather locomotion is one hundred percent done. Uh, player status system is one hundred percent done for three point nine. Um, I'm, I might as well put this up on the freaking stream, shouldn't I? That'd be that'd be wasting. <laughs> sure. I'm hey I have thoughts. Um, all right. So, any thoughts on the changes to the roadmap? Um, I haven't pulled it up yet. You guys think it's okay that they're making so many changes to the roadmap? Do you think it's not cool? I mean. Uh I'd... I take everything on the roadmap with like, um, like McDonald's level of salt. <laughs> That's a lot of salt. Is that a lot or, or two? Or two? Is that a lot? That's a whole lot of salt. Um, like we're, we're talking Morton, Morton levels of salt. Um. <sighs> yeah. I'm still yeah. trying to look for it. Unless you put it in the um. Oh, there it is. I got it. I'm having some difficulty getting it to work. Just a minute. Okay, I'll put are it there in other the salt head. brands? Uh, are there other salt brands? Yes. Probably. Um, Morton is like the. It's either Morton or you get like the the store bought salt. It's like the. Right, I put it in quick chat. Sweet. Um, so, we're down to listing off the types of salt, no, um, so, <laughs> there's sea salt, why will it not work, there's iodized salt, there is iodized salt, most salt is iodized, actually, iodized. I think most, of, most, if not all, say this salt is iodized now. Epsom salt. There you go, Bruce Arana. Thank Eps you. Yeah, Epsom salt. You put that in your bath. And there's a, there's a salt that comes from tears. <laughs> yeah. So the problem that I'm running into, because I'm sure you guys are curious why the hell I'm taking so long. Um, for whatever reason, Twitter images are now downloading as .jfif, which is not a normal file extension. And it uh -huh. is not working, but I ha just renamed them and now I can open them. So this is Squadron 42. We'll do that one first. It is gigantic, okay. oh. so I'll, I'll less say gigantic it. All right. So Squadron 42 remains probably the biggest complaint. This roadmap is the biggest complaint about the community right now. Yeah. I'm not sure if you've even because watched Reddit. It means nothing. Because it's obviously wrong <laughs> yeah <laughs> so question mark um i guess that's all we really have to say about it it's obviously wrong and not in any way correct so because they still have if you look in the chapters they still have stuff from the second quarter of 2019 that's open yep so what's going on anyway that's enough of that one <laughs> Uh, and then the squadron, or the Star Citizen one. It'll come someday. Someday. Someday before the end of time. Uh, that's fine. Ba -ba -ba -ba. Ba -ba -ba. So, yeah, there's not much of change on the, on the Star Citizen one. Not a lot of change. The law system moved from 3.9 to 4.0, or the, sorry, the surrender part moved from 3.9 to 4.0. Uh, and then... Thankfully, all three moons for Microtech were finished this week. Um, that'll be a lot of fun. Way, 
it's it's kind of funny because you think about that and it's like anytime they add another planetary body they're like increasing the amount of area in the game by an unimaginable amount <laughs> um so three new moons to explore um and they got the ship ai stuff done so both the collision avoidance um 3d navigation and the 3d pathfinding on the planet side and uh, player interaction system imp improvements, which uh, Todd Pappy said were quite significant. So hopefully we'll, uh, we can see that live for ourselves. That's obviously the interaction system is how players uh, interact with the entire interact. game. Yep. <laughs> um, so, yeah, I mean, it's kind of built into the name, but just to emphasize, it's how you interact with everything. So it should uh, be good. Um, do you know the details of those improvements, either of you? Mm-mm. Let's go take a look because I realized I didn't know either. I do have a question that I, I'm not going to put in, in the question uh, okay. th thing. Uh, that would okay, be kind of silly, when, so thank you. When when does the Kirk sale end? I mean, who would ever end sales of the Kirk at this point? Oh, yeah, that's right. They're permanent now because yeah. it's, it's, it's in the game, so never mind about that. It so probably is I, permanently on sale. Yeah. So, how, so how many? How much money have they like put a in? A lot. <laughs> like, like, I, like I'll I looked, go. I looked, at, I looked on Thursday. I think we had three seven two seventy one, not three, but two hundred seventy one million and some change. Their funding this year, like they basically since CitizenCon happened, the funding has been out of control. It's just going in a good way. through the roof. Um, the last day that they they okay, I'll make I'll do that instead. Since the start yeah. of since the start of twenty twenty, there have been three, six, eight, eleven, twelve days since the start of the year where they haven't been over a hundred thousand dollars. Oh wow! <laughs> and, and, and even and even on twelve days, it was just like just under. I bet mostly, yeah. The lowest day they had was seventy-seven thousand dollars. And keep, still, it, yeah. keep in mind, a couple of years ago when I was really paying super close attention to the funding, the average daily funding was about thirty grand. So they're yeah, now twenty five. They're now about three to four times that. <laughs> um. So per day, per day. Since the Carrick was released, they've basically made somewhere on the order of looks like say about two million dollars. For a chip that has already been on for sale several times. <laughs> and at a lower price before. It's at a yeah. higher price now. Yeah, it's um it's something. This this train won't but stop, I, guys. I, <laughs> like I wish I had gotten gotten the cook when it was three fifty, but at the time and still now, I'm exploration is not really gonna gonna be a big part of my, my, my personal gameplay. But mm -hmm. you know. It's, it's a, it is a nice ship. To put this in into some perspective, um, twenty uh, last year, at the end of May, mm -hmm. the funding was sorry. The end of April, my bad. The end of April, the funding was roughly equivalent to what it is right now on the seventh of March. Okay. So they're like seven weeks ahead of last year in terms of funding and last year was by far the biggest year they've ever had so yeah yeah they're doing good okay anyway um uh what i was checking the what are the interaction system improvements that they are making Continued development of the interaction system that lets players select dialogue options, interact with props in the environment, and generally interact with the game. This work will include providing, providing the player appropriate feedback when items can't be used, adjusting UI elements to scale and place correctly within geometry, and the ability to bind commonly used actions to hotkeys. Yes! Sweet. Yes. All the hotkeys, please. Yes. <laughs> Um, cause if you, if you let me bind to hotkeys, that means I can buy bind it to a stream deck. Yeah. Which is even better. Um, 
Also completed this week was the weather locomotion, which uh, basically means that your player actually reacts to the weather and uh, it makes it harder to walk and they put their hands up, you know, to block their, the, their visor from being uh, inundated with snow. And is that part of the thing that I had on the Inside Star Citizen a couple of weeks ago about um, being too hot and too cold and or is that something different? Because they talk about radiation on... No, that's, pot, different. Pot, that's, that's, a, different. that's a different thing. This is just for, um, this is just for like locomotion. So when you're walking around, if it's really windy, your player will like lean into the wind and they'll put their okay. hand up to block the, the, uh, snow or I'm assuming things like dust. Um, yeah. Yep. Yeah. Um, the top, the top happiness said that they're, they're going to put radiation and stuff for, in, into the game, but that's later on. Great. Now we can be killed in yet another way. Yeah, right? <laughs> <laughs> All okay, right. Looking forward to it. So, how are we doing for questions here? Good luck. Yeah, I can ask questions all day long, maybe. Okay. Kind of sorta. Go for it fast. No. Uh, let's take a look at what <laughs> we got here. Gotta go down to what the... We have none... I am ashamed of you people. Come on. Are you putting <laughs> this been are, are we putting in the right rank? Oh my god. I haven't clicked on it. Let me see if it's the right here. link. It's been a long time. Oh, fuck the right link, okay. But my time is finally. Are you okay? Now he's trying to sing like Eris, I believe. I can no see question. my dream oh, come alive at night. I can touch the sky. <laughs> <laughs> Come on. They're not gonna hold me Thank down you. no more. Oh no, no we just locked in before. They're not gonna change my mind. <laughs> <laughs> oh my. But yes, please ask us some questions. We uh, would like to figure out what you want to know about and chat about. Cause I'm your friend. So how? Okay, here's a question. How late or on time do you think? 3.9 will be for the power. Uh, on time. I think they got they've, this one nailed. Yeah, they've been, really? they've been, they've what, been what on time. What gives you confidence about that? Uh, well, considering all their patches are pretty much on time, always. Whether or not everything's in it, that's a different question. Yeah, okay, let's talk about that then. That, that, that's what I meant. Like, yeah. Having everything in the patch, like, like it'll be a 3.1 or 3.2. Hmm. Uh, what do you think that'll be? I don't know. I think they'll I think they'll get everything in that they have that they have right now. And uh I think Well let me look at the calendar here. I think they'll go live with it to everybody before April third. Which is the Friday. Oh they could do like the April food day. <laughs> Hey, but then hey, no, no, hey, pass, then no, no, no. If they uh, actually release the patch or not? If it is in PTU in March, they've succeeded in my book. To be totally honest. Oh yeah. I also, a, a different question. Is anyone surprised they didn't have a, a free fly for Pack East? Um. Because I am. They normally do one for for Pack East, and I was telling a friend like. Oh yeah, you can, put, you can probably put, f fly for free during the, uh, in, in a week or so during PAX East, but it didn't happen. Maybe yeah. they thought they were giving too much favoritism to PAX East. <laughs> I have no idea. But no, they they have done that several times. I'm not sure why they didn't, but they've had other ones recently. Um, they're less frequent than they used to be, though. Yeah, they are less frequent. When was the last one? Oh, uh, it was a couple months ago. Um, January, September. Uh, oh, it was uh, it was the anniversary sale, so November. No, that was a while ago then. Well, it depends how you look at it. I mean, compared to how how to, how often they usually used to do. Yeah, it. maybe for they April Fool's Day they'll do a free fly, and everyone will be like, "Are they 
Is there actually a, <laughs> is there actually a free fly? Hey. Are they trying to trying to jerk our chains? What's going on? Yes. Two bells. Yeah, okay, because that, that, that was just something I I, I, I talked with um, Molly and um, Tyler during the past East Boss Citizen, but that, that didn't come up, but it's something I've been, been wondering about. I did talk to um, Molly about um, CitizenCon, and she said, definitely go this year. And this is the year to go. So, really? Yeah, if you have any interest whatsoever in going to CitizenCon, go. Yeah, no, um, CitizenCon, like, the last one was just awesome. Like, it was so much better than any of the other ones I've been to. Like, in terms of the quality of the event itself. Um, yeah. I've had awesome and this times time at all of them. This time it's going to be in L.A. It's going to have a bigger, I don't know how many people that venue can hold, but it's going to be much about bigger than the 47 one billion, but probably they won't invite that many. I uh, if, Wait, people, actually, if, 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 tickets, if tickets sell out, you never know. That's a good question. What do you think? Because then we, we had the one in Austin. Um, that was 1750 About two, it, it can hold 2000 I thought they had sold... Uh, no, the one in Austin had like 3,500 tickets. Two, wasn't it? What? Austin two years ago? Yeah. Yeah, the venue could hold 2000 but they sold... But they had 1750. In, oh, really? In there. Oh, I thought there were more than that. Yeah. Hmm. Um, I asked the staff. To, I asked the staff while we, while we, we were waiting in line. And, they, uh, and then last year they cut it back to like 1300 something, which seemed to work a little better. They also had a had a good sized venue, so. Oh, it's, it's different, different, yeah, different area, so different yeah. than. Yeah, that was in the U uh, Europe and this foot, the other one before that was America. So this one, people told me how many it could hold, but I don't remember the number. But it's more than it's more than Austin. Because that, that's the thing is like, I mean, the LA Convention Center is enormous. So you know, what do you think, Jake? Where do you think they're gonna set the mark at this year? Uh, like two thousand. Yeah, increase. Yeah. I'm, I'm tempted to say 2,500, but that's just me. That'd be going real hard. That'd be twice the size of the uh, one last year. <laughs> again, I really hope that the convention even happens. Yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm thinking it will be. I think I'm not going to, I'm not going to, yeah, we they're, they're probably don't want to go into why and stuff like that, but I'm thinking it by the summer that it should be contained, hopefully. That's the hope. Italics. Hopefully. But I bought my I bought my plane ticket a couple of days ago, so I'm yeah, upset that way. I'm I'm waiting until possibly next month. Definitely May is when I will get them. If if may I do a couple of PSA while, while we're talking about this? Of course. Uh, PSA number one in America you. Probably, if you haven't already, make sure you get a, like a real ID, a federal ID, be yes. be before October, because yes. that that would allow you to fly, fly an airplane. If you just have a normal state ID, you can't go. You can't go. Yeah, on, on as of uh, October first. Yeah. So make sure you do that be before then, because you don't want to be like at the airport, have the wrong ID, and not be able to go. That'll suck. So, so make sure you get your real ID before October first. Sooner, it's sooner rather than later. Uh, PSA number two is that several airlines right now until March 31st are having a free waiver um, special promotion thing, like um, Alaska and several other uh, airlines. If you um, if you buy a ticket now, or book book now. If you need to change of your plan, a change of flight, you won't be charged charge any fees, and that's until the 31st. But you have to fly with, um, I mean, Citizen Con is October, uh, October, obviously, but so, some place, some airlines like JetBlue will only let you fly until June without, without tips, without free change. So make sure you check with, check with airlines, what, what, what the... Highly recommend Alaska. They're good. That, that's who I went with, that's who I went with this, this year. 
Um, this would be they... my first time for Alaska. Alaska Airlines and uh, Virgin merged, and okay. I used to almost exclusively fly Virgin. Hopefully, hopefully it'll be a good flight for me. It'll be a long flight, but hey. <laughs> Yeah, but I'm still work, working on accommodation. Hopefully, I'm getting an Airbnb with some folks. Yeah. If uh, if it happens, we'll probably end up having a relay house again. Likely. Hopefully, we can get uh, we can get David and crew down there. Yeah. And you two are definitely going. I'm definitely going. Uh, I mean, assuming it happens. Yeah. But. Assuming it happens. <laughs> Hey, it's not hey, a foregone conclusion, my... man. <laughs> I know, but I've already bought my ticket, so I'm like, hey, it better happen. <laughs> but yeah, I understand what you're talking about. Um, yeah. Wash your hands, kids. <laughs> right. <laughs> Speaking of PSAs. Um, and don't touch your face. Don't touch yep. your, uh, your eye. Yep. So... Are people just not asking us questions, or is the form not test. working? Let me test. Wrong place. Ask the questions. Elise. <laughs> yes, it's the working. Show, <laughs> the, the, work show, the show goes live. Every Saturday, two thirty. <laughs> sorry, three thirty Eastern. Two thirty. Yeah, two thirty old time. That's two thirty for me. Um. So, so Bryce Serena, what would be your uh, like deciding factor on whether you go right. or not? Oh. Uh, he said he's still deciding if he wants to go. Yeah, I mean, like I said, Molly said this is definitely the DJ get it go. She didn't give any hint. We 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 tried to get her to tell us something or a small hint, but she she, she wouldn't say anything. So we have, all we can do is speculate. Wow, they're just uh, apparently they just want you to sing there, Jake. Hey, <laughs> Star Trek Enterprise, it's, it's coming. Yeah, I'm the same way. I understand. I, 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 had, I had to. I put most of my money into PayPal because I expected to use PayPal to, to buy to buy to buy to buy a ticket. But Alaska Airlines does not allow PayPal, so I had to go a different different route. Oh yeah, okay. So yeah. I might as well provide a small update on um, on uh, star space. Uh, space stuff because well. Things are happening. Okay. Um, so, last night, the uh, final mission for the Dragon spacecraft took off from Cape Canaveral. Um, so, this is the original Dragon. Uh, they, they first launched in 2010. And it's this was its 20th mission. And uh, so, it's on its way to the space station uh, delivering cargo. And uh, it will come back down in a month. And uh, everything was very successful. The then they landed the booster back at uh, back at landing zone one at Cape Canaveral, which is pretty spectacular, as always. And that was their fiftieth landing of a rocket booster. Yep, which is just awesome. So I have it is a couple pictures for you guys, but of course it's going to take me a few minutes to get them going. So. Um, now, something to discuss here. A lot of people probably know that uh, uh, the flight before that, they lost the booster when they tried to land it. And we finally got an answer as to why that happened. Um, so basically what happened was they have these weather forecasting models they use that tell them, you know, what the conditions are going to be like. Um at because uh, a lot of times they're they're way down range in the ocean where the barge is the landing barge and they don't have like an awesome um uh weather forecast for that area so they rely on these models to try and predict what the weather is going to be like out at sea and basically the wind model they were using was wrong 
and when the booster came down, it was seeing winds that were from completely the wrong direction and the wrong speed, and it decided that it couldn't safely land on the drone ship without possibly blowing it up. <laughs> so it decided to abort and landed in the ocean instead. Um, it's kind of frustrating, I think, for a lot of people because, well, no, none more so than, than SpaceX because they, uh, well... Um, it soft landed in the ocean, so it was just sitting there, but they couldn't do anything with it. Yeah. Um, so, uh, here's some great pictures from last night. Um, all these, all three of these are from John Kraus, who's my favorite. Yes, please. Space flight photographer. Um, this is an amazing shot. That was uh, this. This is the interaction between the first stage and the second stage right after they separate. Because this, the first stage flies back to land at uh, Cape Canaveral. And the two engine plumes interacting create like a nebula in the sky. Which is super cool, as you can see. Okay, so I'm seeing a rocket at, at, at the bottom. Yep. <clears throat> okay. Yeah, so at the very bottom there um, is the second stage. So it's continuing on into orbit to deliver uh, uh, Dragon. The I believe in this shot the first stage is already out of frame, um, okay. but uh, that's that nebula is from the uh, engines on each of the rockets interacting. Yeah, I'm at I'm at least ninety three. I thought it was just something from actual space. <laughs> <laughs> um, so this is a shot. Uh, this is a long a long exposure. You can tell by the star streaks there. Um, and this is basically a long exposure of the, that separation of the first and second stage. So the first stage turns around and comes back to land. And that's just cool. <laughs> yeah. It is. Very cool. It is. And there's one more, which is taken from taken this morning. And it was... There it is. There's the first stage standing on its landing pad. Pretty cool. That is, uh, so that concluded the final mission for Dragon. Um, Dragon will be, re that, that particular Dragon will land again in about a month and will be retired, probably f find its way to a museum or some other honorable spot. And um, this rocket, um, that was its second um, mission, so it will continue on to fly a third and fourth and however many more missions. Um... And, of course, uh, Dragon 2, which is a cargo, a cargo version of the Crew Dragon, will start doing its cargo launches uh, in about six months. And you said this was the 50th, the 50th launch? No, the 50th landing. 50th landing, uh, okay. There are about 85 launches, I think, now for SpaceX, which is okay. amazing. Amazing. All right. So hopefully you guys enjoyed that quick real space update. And I will now uh, remove this image so it's not so janky. There we go. Um, lots of other real space stuff. If you have any questions about that, you can feel free to ask me that stuff as well. But I would like to ask Jake, did we talk mm -hmm. about Dark Souls Kingdom Hearts on before the show? We talked yeah, about yeah. it before the show. All right. So you're, you're up. Go ahead. All right. <laughs> so... So, uh, in the, like, in, like, September, October last year, uh, Kingdom Hearts 3 released a new difficulty mode called Critical. Um, it's, it's been in games before this one, but it wasn't in Kingdom Hearts at launch, Kingdom Hearts 3 at launch. Um, it just turns this game into Dark Souls, um, and it is extremely difficult, and horrifying and wonderful but also horrifying <laughs> um, <laughs> and it's it's just so hard like it's it's i can't even describe it like there's a like without going into too many details uh the last kind of phase of um of this game is very like um like like boss gauntlet e i guess is a is a good yeah. way to put it okay. um and it just it's it's 
like you have to fight three bosses at once instead of the the standard one, you know. <laughs> and uh, <laughs> um, so highly recommend if you just want a bad time. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Way to have a time. Yeah. Oh, it's hard. Oh man, that's hilarious. Why are you subjecting yourself to it then? Because it's fun. <laughs> <laughs> that's what you should emphasize. Oh, yeah. Um, also, I have a very long, deep, storied history with Kingdom Hearts. So, um, as we had that one stream one time where I explained the entire plot of Kingdom Hearts, <laughs> um, that was a good time. Yeah. Yeah, the, we have some uh, good one-offs, like like our Marvel one that we did. Before the Marvel one was good. Yeah, yeah, yeah that's good. I'm actually Are we do um, that sometime, again sometime soon. That's a good question. Do we have anything Marvel? Else? Not, not or that like Marvel, that. Anything, anything. Okay. Oh, uh, I would like a, an Arrowverse one, like a CW Arrowverse for the, the, the superhero mm. stuff. <sighs> <laughs> <laughs> Gotta find someone passionate enough to do it, passionate enough yeah, to do it. Yeah, that is not me. Not me. okay, fine. I'll um, find, find a different a different topic then. It's oh the Arrowverse, <laughs> especially oh no. Oh, I can't I, even I say, say I can't even just, say especially one of them because they're all just as egregiously bad. No, some of them are better than others. It depend it depends on what your taste is like. The, but, like the Flash L, is the best one. Like, from L, that was too hardcore, too straight, not, not enough humor for me. And then they had Legend of Tomorrow, which is just the opposite. It's just too humor, uh, not, not enough drama. But, you know, then you have everything in between. God. And so, I also want to say congratulations, congratulations to Supergirl, Melissa Benoist, and her husband uh, have, are expecting a baby. <laughs> Yes, congratulations. Uh, have you seen, uh, Eric, have you seen the the meme of, uh, like, the worst... It, it's like this video where it's just called the worst... The worst CG of all time. No. I, I should I should see... Watch this, And though. it's just a very specific episode of, uh, of, of Supergirl. Supergirl. Okay. Oh, it's gonna that rough. One. It's rough. I mean, it's a, it's a weekly TV show that have a, an allocated budget of so many dollars. Have to do every yeah. week. I used to I used to really enjoy those shows. Um, season two of Arrow is where it peaked for me, because man, the guy they got to play Slade was just so good. Um, the first season of of The Flash was also very good. Um, but. I wrote then then literally the flash just became like hey let's just have like more people who are fast how about literally any other villain from any like from what the are flash what they doing now but still like it's just <laughs> like wally's not even in the show apparently because he had some weird falling out with like the director yeah, or something. I'm not familiar with that one. So uh, well, we actually uh, have two questions that I'll quickly answer. Okay. Okay. <laughs> oh, are they that? Um, are they? Are they just? <laughs> Shrug. <laughs> Shrug asks, "What's uh, Nikara? What subject do you teach? If I recall correctly, you're a teacher. Uh, I am not a teacher. Paul's a teacher. No, that's, um, that's teacher. Paul the Astropub Shelley. What does he, he teach? Teaches, he teaches history, history. and history. civics. Yeah. Yeah. Um I do teach but more of a in a training role. Um I'm I work for IT at a hospital and so I do some training for IT systems. Um So um the next the next question is from Gib uh who asks uh Jake, how are you liking Clone Wars season 7 thus far? Ah! Uh -oh. It's so good. Oh, it's so good. Uh, I haven't watched uh, the third episode. Came out yesterday, but man, the Clone Wars is back. They have brought it very hard. 
Uh, it is the best Star Wars you'll ever see in your life. And Ooh. the animation is beautiful. That's a lot, Jake. You want, you, sure no. you want to put that out there? Yes. Uh, absolutely, I'm putting that out there. It is absolutely the best Star Wars you'll ever... It's the best visual Star Wars, I'll say that. Okay, that's better. I think the best better. Star Wars story is a book. Which one? Uh... In, in my humblest opinion, uh, the the current Thrawn trilogy. Oh, the current one, not the past one. Nope. I think the current one's a lot better. So, uh, Ninja Cat Emoji asks, um, do you think we'll Check be able name. to? <laughs> do you think we'll be able to go down into the clouds of Crusader in 4.0? Uh, nope. I. They I don't need. Think so. Nope. I think they need planetary clouds first. They have the nebula thing down, but um, I don't know if they need planetary clouds to make that work. We'll see. Yeah, I think if you do. get too close to a planet, you just blow up, right? I actually have never tried. Yeah, yeah, your ship just explodes. Oh, that's unfortunate. Um. So also, I wanted to mention a couple other things. Um. So, for the, those who didn't see it, uh, about a week and a half ago, um, there was a new cinematic shown for Baldur's Gate 3. Yes. Oh, yeah. It looked incredible. Also, also like an hour of gameplay. And I was just going to say, they did a live live CIG style pre yep. uh, gameplay uh, playthrough on stage for about an hour. Uh, they died. They crashed. It was great. They was, died rather immediately. They were, it, was it was good. it was very CIG style, um, um, which I appreciate. Hi, so, so if if you like Baldur's Gate, like the original Baldur's Gate, if so, if you like Dungeons and Dragons, pay attention to yeah, this game. One hundred percent. Um, one hundred percent. If because it's just five E the game, which is yeah. exciting. Um, if you like Baldur's Gate and you're unsure of how the, the turn base is going to fly with the Baldur's Gate, because they haven't done it that way before, um, please, for the love of God, go play Divinity Original Sin 2. Yes. Um, you will yes. be extremely yes. happy with it. Let me tell you that. Um, actually, I say this. Oh, no, never mind. It was on sale. It was on you sale had last your... weekend. <laughs> I you had your chance. It was on sale last weekend. I was going to buy it, and I didn't buy it. And then I was very sad because then I went to buy it on Tuesday, and it wasn't on sale anymore. Yeah, um, I played the. Uh, I played a bunch of the first one. Um, yeah, it's... Great games. Divinity OS 2 is maybe one of the best RPGs made in the last decade. Um, and that's... That game is why Wizards of the Coast allowed them to make Baldur's Gate yes. 3. Yes. Yes. Um, also, their uh, uh, Larian is creating a Divinity Original Sin board game, which releases oh my in God. October. What um, did you just say? <laughs> yes. Um, and uh, yeah, that that's coming out. It's got miniatures. Uh, it's it's basically a tabletop RPG if the board oh. game was your GM. My lord, I need to play that. Um, yeah. I am, pro by the way, I got to give a shout out to Gloomhaven, which I am currently playing with uh, a group of friends. Oh, yeah, yeah. Um, we're about 25 scenarios in. They each take three to four hours. So, mm. yeah. Um, or if you're us, five <laughs> sometimes. Uh. <laughs> Um, well, Kiri, the the Kickstarter happened already, like six months ago. Oh, did it? <laughs> um, oh, for the Divinity yeah. one, yeah. Okay. For Divinity board game, um, you, I think you can still pre-order it. I I pre-ordered mine from their booth at Pax e or not oh, cool. Pax East, uh, Pax South. Oh, um, uh, we should probably make that call out really quickly. South by Southwest was just canceled. Yes. Um, just yeah. in case anybody was trying to go, or you should know. Yeah, um, for some reason, E3 is still happening. I don't think it's going to. We're ways out from uh, E3 either. at this point. Yeah, yeah. I mean, they, they should announce something soon. Like, whether whether they, they, they will, it, it, it will, it's not, not going to be canceled or will be canceled. But I GDC think got hope canceled. They'll, they'll something. What I think is probably going to happen with E3 is 
if they still hold it, they'll basically just do it in an empty auditorium and and webcast it. Um, so so I think if E three the physical location of E three with the with like booths and stuff, if that doesn't happen this year, I think E three is done. Really? And it, it's it's wow. yeah. Oh yeah. No, Sony hasn't done it in the last two years running. What um, would it be? Rep- but that would just be replaced by a whole bunch of small conferences, though, right? Well, they wouldn't even have conferences. It would just be like like Nintendo Directs, basically. Yeah. So. Hello, but I'm saying Kimmy like 65? the the event, the event E3. Yeah, I could see it. If, if it doesn't happen this year, I think it's going to be done. Because what because what will happen is they ha- like um, all the companies have these announcements prepared, right? Yeah. Yeah. So, so if the conference doesn't happen, they still want to announce their games because it's like it's literally announcing everything coming out in the fiscal year. So, um, so they'll announce that stuff anyway, and they'll realize that they get the exact same amount of attention that they would have if they got if they went to E3. So then they're like, oh hey, let's just save money and not go to E3. Possible, unless they don't get as much attention. Which you know is possible. So let me so let me bring it back to back to Star Citizen for a moment. What do you guys think of whether whether they're, they're like say that this thing doesn't blow over? They have to do something with Star Citizen, make make a online only stream only. How do you, you think that would go over? I mean, pretty poorly, it obviously. But... No, it wouldn't be poorly. It'd, it'd be so people were safe. That would be yeah, the only it'd be, reason. It'd be totally fine. I mean, I mean, it is what it is, right? Almost every can every convention around the world is being canceled right now. Yep. So it, I don't think it would come as a shock to anybody. I think it will mm-hmm. take a while though before they actually do cancel it. Um, I think they're gonna wait and see how it plays out. But the unfortunate thing is that in the United States, the the uh, it's just getting ramped up. Like it's hardly even started yet. So, you know. We'll see how that goes. Um, so, anything else anybody wanted to mention about Baldur's Gate while we were on that topic? Other than it was uh, really good. It's awesome. Yeah. I wasn't That's able, nice. I didn't get a chance to, I, I saw it at, at Pack East, but it was in a closed section. It wasn't open, so I didn't really go inside anything. But they had a panel. Was, they had a project there. They had a panel that they recorded, so by all means, watch it. Um, for those on YouTube who are curious, uh, someone Mud Truck asked, uh, "Have the Olympics been pushed yet?" Um, not yet. They plan to make the decision by May, uh, which is actually pretty late because it's in July. Um, but it sounds like they're leaning towards at least postponing it. Yeah. Um, what is this again? The Olympics. The Olympics. The Olympics. Thank you. The Olympics are in Tokyo this year. It's and that one's a really hard one because you know Olympic host cities usually spend somewhere between ten and twenty billion dollars. Um, yep. And that's like, oh man, <laughs> to not hold the event would be another kind of pain. Uh. Um. At least, yes, it is. It's October tenth. Yep. As of it's actually back to its original date. Uh, thank you, Bryce yep. Arena. 31 months. Oh, my God. That's a lot of months. It's a lot of months. Thank you, thank you, thank you. I do hope you come to CitizenCon because I'd love to hang out with you again, Bryce Arena. That was fun. Maybe we can rent another Tesla. <laughs> there's a lot more of them in LA now than there was in Austin back when I, when we did the other one and if you do I definitely want to ride oh, wow. alright um, let's see if we got any more questions here alright so we do have some more questions the first one is from let's figure out which emoji this is this is the Spouting whale emoji asks, mm-hmm. "What's your favorite, absolute favorite game of all time? Absolute favorite, no hedging. Oh. One game. What's your favorite game all time? That's difficult. 
Right. <laughs> I'm gonna I'm gonna cop out and say the first thing first thing that came to my mind was Kotor One, Natural the Old Republic One. Oh, that's a really good game. All right. I don't know if it's your favorite all the time, but that's the first one. That's what comes to my mind. When, uh, when the question is asked. So, so favor and best are different things. Mm -hmm. uh, this um, the question was your favorite. So, your what's yeah, your favorite uh, game? By the way, best is Super Mario World. Um, it, it is a flawless game and it is timeless. Um, favorite game is going to have to be. Mm. Probably Kingdom Hearts 2. Okay. It, it's too good. Like, the first game was so, like, straightforward, and it had a lot of mechanics problems. And the second game was... it. it it's like how... It, it's like Mass Effect 1 and Mass Effect 2. It's just those are good, those are good contenders too. Someone else mentioned Mass Effect Two and, and yeah, Cat. Mass Effect Two is a very close second for me. Um, and yeah, yeah, I'm gonna have to say Kingdom <laughs> Hearts Two. Um, it's I I play Kingdom Hearts Two like every couple of years. Oh really? I, I I go back to it very often. I tried playing. Coach, I, I've never finished Kotor 2. I've mm -hmm. tried playing Oh my god, years. dude! I'm, I'm like three quarters of the way through and I just, I, something else came up and I, I never went back to it. Kotor 2. It's like, right. it's like, it's like dated for me. Like, I, 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 you know, I can't really get through it, but I, I, I so, tried. So, Kotor 1 has uh, the highest high of, of uh, story beats. Oh, yeah. uh, I'm not going to say what it is. Right. Um, but... Uh, KOTOR 2 is just, it's definitely the best RPG Obsidian has ever made. Um, it is top five Star Wars stories ever made. And it, it's just consistently good about, like, the nature of the Force. What, what is the light and dark side even mean? Who cares what it means? What, what, what if there's something better that's not either of those things? Um, it's, it's, it's so good. And it makes you make, like, the absolute hardest choices you'll ever make in a video game. Um, it's, it's one of the best, it's one of the best RPGs ever made. I, I would say, like, overall, beginning to end, KOTOR 2 is better than KOTOR 1. So, really? I'm having... Yes, uh... because KOTOR 1 has a higher spike of quality. One very specific spike. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Whereas KOTOR 2 had most spread out overall. Yeah, KOTOR 2 is just consistently amazing. So I'm having a lot Which of trouble. One has Karth? I'm I'm having a lot of trouble with this question, but I think uh, it's like a four-way tie in my head, but I think I'm going to probably go with Oblivion. Oblivion's okay. very good. Which is a bit of a weird one for me because I didn't really when when I read the question, it's not the first thing I thought of, but when I thought long and hard about it, I think it was Oblivion. I loved that game, like, to death. Um, I think I played more of Morrowind, but I enjoyed Oblivion more. I, I have every I have every Xbox you achieve. I did I did that like whole thing in Oblivion where I there was literally no corner of that game that I didn't like explore. It's, it's every every tiny little bit of it I went through. Oblivion um, was. Oblivion was my first my first game of, of that series, mm -hmm. and I, I I didn't I I went in not knowing what to expect, and it was just too open world for me. I, I, I couldn't I couldn't get through it. All right, Eric Eric, uh, you, you know exactly what this is referring to, but Minerva just uh, reminded me of another extremely difficult video game choice of Bay versus Bay from Life is Strange. Oh, oh. God. Ah. Oh. <laughs> The, the hardest choice I've ever made in a video game. <laughs> like, by a long way, too. Yeah. Like, 
What the hell? That game was so good and made me <laughs> dead inside for like two weeks. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Please play Life is Strange. God, please it's play good. Life is Strange before the storm. Please play the Adventures of Captain Spirit, and please play Life is Strange. Too. Those folks are, know how to make games. I, they know how to I make know, games. I know the good game, but I haven't, I haven't haven't gotten to it. It's on my Steam. It's on my Steam library. It's near Automata. Like you can play, yep. through, uh, you can play uh, up to a certain point and think you finish the game, but there's a whole uh, another more game after that point. So you really, you really have to um, play through the whole thing in order to get, get your full, full experience. Yeah, cool. when you get to the end of that game, there's something that happens that is just a, like nothing short of revolutionary. I would say. <laughs> Uh, so, and uh, actually, to your question, real quick, Elise, uh, Kingdom Hearts does not have dialogue options. It is a true blue JRPG. Um, so you're you're just playing through a story. So, uh, but it's an action RPG like like Dark Souls is. I'm gonna go a different que- a different direction here, and I'm gonna ask you guys. Well, I'm, I, I'm gonna answer it myself as well, but I want to ask you guys a question similar but not the same. What is the most memorable video game you've ever played? Brothers: The Tale of Two Sons. Memorable. I mean, how do you define? I mean, I know the definition of memorable, but what do you mean when you say memorable? I like, mean the game that stick that that has the best memories for you, that always like lots of memories trigger. Um, and sense. yeah, I th- um, I think for me, it lives for in me, your brain. Like right here, there's like a section of your brain that's like that game. Yeah, that's what I mean. Yeah, for me, it's it's, it's kind of a tie between Final Fantasy XI online and Star Wars: The Old Republic Online because they're both MMOs. I had a lot of fun with my girl and friends while I play them, and I'm looking forward to doing doing something similar when um Star Citizen comes out. All right, people, more fun with friends. But yeah, definitely uh, the online online game. I did play Eve Online too, but that was more. You have to, you have to, I have to remember I got griefed a lot because I'm a care bear, so that wasn't really, <laughs> really, really that fun. But definitely Final Fantasy XI and that was real public. Real public. Um, All right, people. What? Uh, if, if if I say anything on this show, it'll be this. Um, please, please, please take two and a half hours out of your life and how, here, let me see how much it is right now. What game? Brothers. And $15. Two and a half hours, $15. Please go buy Brothers The Tale of Two Sons. You must have a game pad in order to play this game. But I'm out. Do not, do not, do not play this with a mouse and keyboard. Do not. It needs... It needs triggers and joysticks in order to play this game. It is so so why video games are so important to me and why video games are so important as a storytelling medium. Um, Steam controller will work. Steam controller will work. Um, um, this so so the the difference between. A, a movie, a TV show, a book, or a video game is everything except video games is passive entertainment. Mm-hmm. You are an observer. You are just taking in the story passively. And even very impactful games like uh, like God of War or The Last of Us or games like that yeah. are essentially movies or linear passive stories that you get to play the action sequences of yeah brothers a tale of two sons does something that very few games do and but they're starting to do more and more but it was really the first one for me that that kind of just nailed it um and that is it marries gameplay and narrative together in a way that is just like it when you realize the thing you have to do at the end of that game is what you have to do. The game doesn't tell you there's no dialogue in this game at all. The game just expects you to know how to do it. And you do 
you when you have that sudden realization that like visceral emotional reaction to the thing that you have to do to accomplish the end of this game that completely brings all, the entire story together all of the mechanics that you've learned through that two hour experience all in one together at once that is what makes video games special and Kemi 65, I've played every Wing Commander game. That is not true. Wing Commander is absolutely... And there's nothing wrong with this. There's absolutely nothing wrong with this. It is a video game that is a story that Chris Roberts is trying to tell you. Yes. And you can affect certain decisions about it. I'm talking about the the actual like moment-to-moment Thing that you have to do in a game to be fair is tied fair, into what, the narrative to be fair what Kimmy said could actually be true for true just true for him no no I'm saying no that but it's no that I'm um, it's not subjective I'm I'm talking about like moving your character is tied to the narrative of the game oh that's interesting pushing a button I need to play that is game. tied to the narrative <laughs> of the game oh it's not just the interface that you have with the story. It is the story. So, my mine is an interesting one because it is entirely... But that's just a choice, Minerva. Sorry. <laughs> that's just a choice you make. Um, Please play Brothers. <laughs> my, my choice here is an interesting one because it really gave me a good instruction on how much... Um, audio is tied to memory um and that is my most memorable game is fallout 3 mm -hmm. and it's all about the soundtrack because oh, yeah. i hear what whenever i hear one of those one of the songs from that game my brain is in the wasteland right now like that's where i am i'm fighting a rad scorpion <laughs> like that's yeah. you know and oh. um and that's like I spent a lot of time in Fallout 3 and the the music is really what tied me into the story and uh because each of the songs like brings up specific memories and um yeah no I I was really impressed and it it's sad it it's what makes it so sad that Bethesda seems to be or Bethesda or whatever it's called um seems to be dropping the ball a bit but uh they did a great job on that game I need to change my answer a little bit. I'm going to add a single player game game from mm -hmm. Memorable. It would probably be Dragon Age Origins. I did all oh, the God, Origins. Yes. And yeah. Oh, man, man. Trying to do Broken Circle three hours oh. straight. <laughs> I remember. <laughs> you remember that? Oh, Broken yeah. Circle break me almost every time because of because it would take so long. I know they made mods or macros or whatever. So, so long. I, do it man, um, automatically, but I, I never, I never used one of those. I did, I went through each, each origin. I went through Broken Circle again. So, wow, yeah. Um, thank you all for joining us. Um, there is one last question, but it's about COVID nineteen, and we don't really need to talk about COVID nineteen any more than we already have. So. Let's just say everyone wash your hands and that's good enough. Um, thank you all for joining us. We had a great time on the show with you today. And I hope you're all here next week. Um, thank you for joining us. Uh, legend. Fast card. Um, do you want to uh, talk about your show again? Please? Oh, yes. It, it's Solo Citizen. That'll be on tomorrow at 8 p.m. Uh, Eastern. I'm going to drop the link again. There you go. And I want to give a shout out to Shiver. He's going to be streaming tonight on his, um, his, um, tape, not RPG. So that's Shiver. And Definitely. Paul, Paul is, um, doing the actor pub. Um, In just an hour, um, yeah. Yeah. So let me find that real quick. Thank you. There it is. Definitely go watch the Astro Pub. Oh, we lost Jake. Yeah, we lost Jake. There he is. I, I don't know why I clicked that. Oh, that was weird. I did. 
Uh, <laughs> it was calling calling your name. You clicked me. You clicked me. Um, uh, this week on the Astro Pub is Diabolus and Massacast. Awesome. Thank you, everybody. Um, and as uh, Minavira says, don't lick strangers. Yeah, don't.